Ryzen 5 7600, Intel Core i9-13400, they all sound like random numbers and letters, right? In fact, I think anyone can use them as solid passwords. Whether you're upgrading or building a new system, I think it's important to have at least a basic understanding on how CPUs are named. So without wasting any time, let's decode these names. AMD's Ryzen series, based on their Zen architecture, offers a straightforward naming convention. First up, we have the categories or segments, which are the Ryzen 9, Ryzen 7, 5, and 3. Obviously, higher numbers indicate more powerful CPUs, with Ryzen 9 at the top for high core count enthusiasts and Ryzen 3 catering to more budget-friendly quad-core needs. But that's not all though. If you're up for a lower power chip, they also have the Athlon, but that's sort of a different family from the Ryzen chips. But if you're up for even more power, AMD also has the Threadripper family of chips, AMD's high-end desktop chip line offering up to 96 cores for the most intense computing tasks. It's usually for high-end video editing, 3D rendering, machine learning research, and other scientific tasks like perhaps browsing between 96 tabs in Chrome. As for the rest of the CPU numbers, taking Ryzen 5 7600 as an example, the first digit 5 denotes the category. The next line, in this case 7, indicates it's a 7th generation Ryzen chip, and the rest in this case, 600 is the model variant, with higher numbers generally offering better performance. There are also suffixes, and here's what they mean. X indicates higher performing chips, often with factory overclocking. G indicates that there are integrated graphics, eliminating the need for a separate GPU for basic tasks. This is why processors like the Ryzen 5 5600G are so famous for budget gaming PC builds since you can just play games without a dedicated GPU. H and U used in certain CPUs with H for high performance and U for ultra low power. Recently in 2023, AMD revealed a new naming scheme that is a bit more confusing. Let's take the Ryzen 5 7640U for example. The first digit which in this case was 7 indicates the generation or the portfolio year. 7 was for 2023, 8 will be for 2024, and so on. The next digit, which for our example is 6, indicates the market segment or the category of the chip. In this case, it was a Ryzen 5, so it can be either 5 or 6 according to AMD. Again, higher means better. The next digit indicates the architecture. It's a 4 since we are currently on the Zen 4 architecture. And lastly, we have the feature isolation. And for this, it's zero, which means it's a lower model within the segment, which in this case is the Ryzen 5 segment. If it's five, then it's on the higher end of the segment. And now we also have suffixes for this naming scheme. And instead of indicating features, this new name scheme indicates the form factor or TDP. Here's what they mean. HX means it has a power draw of 55 watts and up and is intended for maximum performance. HS means it can draw up to 35 watts and sometimes even more. It is intended for creators and maybe even some light gaming. It's usually used on gaming laptops. U is for processors that can draw 15 to 28 watts of power and is the usual choice for ultra-thin productivity laptops and setups. C is the same as U, but only used for Chromebooks. And finally, we have E which is the fanless version of U and only draws up to 9 watts of power. On the other side of things, Intel also has a quite similar naming scheme as AMD, but they also have a new line of processors, the Core Ultra or codename Meteor Lake. This new line of processors dropped the I completely, so the Core i9, i7, i5, and i3 will transition to Core Ultra 9, Core Ultra 7, and Core Ultra 5. These new processors feature arc-level graphics, AI capabilities, and top-tier performance. With that said, their naming schemes are still more or less the same. But let's talk about Intel's traditional naming scheme first. When you see the Core i9, i7, i5, and i3, those are different tiers of performance. They are differentiated usually by the number of cores and features, but to make it easy, just think that the i9 is the best one and the i3 is the worst. 
Of course, there's the Intel Premium or Celeron, which are at the lowest end of things. Now, as for the numbers, Intel usually has the first one or two digits for generation numbers. So in this case, if the Intel Core i9-14900K, it's a 14th gen processor. The rest of the numbers are the SKU. But like AMD, the higher the number, the better. For the Intel i9-14900K, it's a 900. So of course, you can expect it to be at the top of the line. At the end of the product name, there are suffixes indicating features like K for overclockability, F for the absence of integrated graphics, H for high performance graphics, U for ultra low power, this is commonly found on laptops, X for extreme unlocked or high desktop performance. Of course, there are a few more, but for now, that's basically all you need to know in 2024. And if you see combined letters like in this case, HX or HK processors, it still has the same meanings, just combine them. In the case of HX, it's an extreme unlocked processor with high performance graphics, something like that. Both Intel and AMD have their quirks in naming CPUs, but understanding the basics can demystify the process of choosing the right processor. Now you know not to buy a laptop with a U-series Intel or AMD processor when you're planning to play some AAA games. And perhaps you've also been thinking about getting the equally famous Ryzen 5 5600G or the Ryzen 5 5600X. You'll know that the X variant is more capable in terms of processing, but the G variant is the only way to go if you're planning to play games without a dedicated graphics card. If you have questions, just leave a comment down below, and I'll see you tomorrow.